All right, join me in Norway while we talk about the Dell Pro 14. By the way, this is take two of this, uh, of reviewing this laptop because I, I botched the first one. Anyway, what we want to find, I'm excited about this review because this is the first of the new Dell series laptops with their new naming convention that we're reviewing. So they got rid of the Inspiron Latitude XPS and went to like Dell Pro, Dell Pro Plus, Dell Pro Plus Premium, Dell Pro Plus Diamond status. And thus you now have the new Dell Pro 14. So it's pretty cool that we got one of these in studio to test. What we want to find out is if their computers are as cool as their new names and if you should buy one yourself. Let's get some specs out of the way really quick. This has the Core 5 120U processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM soldered on. It is not user upgradable. It has one terabyte NVMe solid state drive, which is user upgradable. It has the Intel integrated graphics card and a 14 inch FHD plus touch 300 nit display. I really, really like the panel in this computer. It's matte, it's not glossy, so that means that you can sit out by an open window or outside at a cafe at college campus with a lot of direct sunlight and you'll still be able to see it pretty good. While it is not as bright as some of its competitors in the same price tag, 300 nits is more than enough to get you by. And truthfully, in our test, it's really closer to like the 350 mark anyway. And even though this does have a touch digitizer on it, you don't sacrifice anything like clarity or uh, color accuracy on it. It says very, very true whites, very, very deep blacks. It uses Dell's color calibration. It is overall an excellent panel being awarded a four out of five. Probably even closer to being a five out of five, but honestly, I really wanted to see a 2K panel in this machine. And while you can upgrade to that, you do sacrifice the touch capabilities if you do so. Touchpad on it is a four out of five. It's a little bit small, but it is super accurate. It doesn't ghost that bad, and it goes exactly where you tell it to. And the tactile response to it is very, very good. Dell fixed the kind of mushiness that plagued their old series of computers. And this one, it's just, it feels clean. It's a very, very great, uh, uh, it's, it's a very, very great touchpad. Keyboard on it, five out of five. Very, very accurate. The keys feel good. They're large. They're in an, in an, in an intuitive location. And even though it doesn't have a full-size numpad on the right because it is just a 14-inch machine, it does have a backlight. They're very mechanical. If you are a fast typer, you will have a great experience with this keyboard. Keyboard definitely wins five out of five. Speakers, because they don't advertise Dolby or b or some nonsense like that, are like about a three and a half out of five. Bottom line is that they're very loud and they're very clear and they don't distort that bad at all. The only issue that they really have is that they don't have a whole lot of bass to them. But ultimately they are fairly decent speakers and if you're going to be using this machine to like let's say watch a movie with some friends and you certainly could because it does have a very good viewing angle on the display. You'll be, everybody will be able to hear the audio just fine. If you're listening to a podcast or some music on the go, again, speakers are adequate. Now, most people are gonna be using headphones anyway, but that said, if you needed them in a pinch because you're doing some like on-site studio editing, they're gonna be accurate. And speaking of studio, I O on it is a five out of five. On this side, you've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports disguised as USB-C. <laughs> you couldn't fool me, Thunderbolt 4. You got a full-size HDMI port. You've got a power plug, proprietary Dell power plug, where you plug it in because it doesn't run on solar energy. And then you've got a TRRRS jack. Um, the USB-C ports uh, take power. You can charge the laptop on them, on both of them. And the nice thing about that too is that Dell provided a USB-C charger, but because they are USB-C, you will never ever uh, have an issue finding a place to plug in. You've got two USB type A ports here, a talking ethernet jack, and then a mini Kensington lock because everybody uses Kensington lock. Really about the only thing that it is missing is a camera card reader. So if you're like, let's say somebody that uses Photoshop, a photographer, something like that, that likes to go on location, you will be maybe a little bit disappointed that it doesn't have a camera card on it, but, uh, because it's got Thunderbolt 4, you plug in a camera card reader and you will be no worse for wear. Mobility on it. Uh, kind of like a three out of five. It's got a 10 and a half hour battery life. That's the advertised uh, spec on it. That's about the average that it gets. And we've had a very, a varying degree of range on it, anywhere between like eight hours to 12, depending on what you were doing. 
If you are doing just like normal productivity tasks, the tent, like your you know, college or traveling with it and doing like documents and Excel sheets, that kind of thing, you're gonna have a fine enough experience with it. But given the price tag, which is about the $1,200 range, I really wanted to see better battery life in this thing. And more importantly, I wanted to see something just a little bit sleeker. See, that's the thing with this machine is when you buy it, and you get it, you will probably be a little bit disappointed with it at first glance because it just kind of looks and feels a little chintzy and plasticky. <laughs> Dell App says that this thing is made out of like 30% recycled plastics and meh, 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 meh. But like, they claim that this thing is like a textured, like magnetite exterior shell, but ultimately it is just kind of a little chunky and heavy for a 14 inch machine. But then you start to use it and then you check out all the specs on paper and you realize that the simplicity is frankly almost one of its best offerings. See, there's nothing really going on on this machine that it doesn't need. It just has a very simplified approach. It's very like clean. I wouldn't call it modern, but there's nothing on there that you don't need. No weird extraordinary buttons or weird stuff. I just really, really appreciate that they went with something that it isn't trying to like, you know, advertise at you or I don't know, give you more features and stuff that you just don't want. But if you are somebody that's traveling a lot, you know, again, it's not, I mean, this thing is less than four pounds, right? I mean, you're going to be able to throw this thing in and out of a backpack going in and out of an airport or a college classroom, like with zero issue. But it would have been nice for your thousand plus dollars to just get something. Maybe, I don't know, like, you know, Apple has their like aluminum, right? Everything they make is out of aluminum and it's thin and it's light and it's strong. This thing, for what it's worth, feels like it could take a beating, but it is just plasticky. I don't know. So mobility is kind of a, a, a toss up there. Features though, does come with Wi-Fi 6E, has Bluetooth, it's got a fingerprint reader, it's got a Hello compatible camera, which I really like, and it's actually a pretty decent webcam as well. Here's some footage of what that looks like now. This is the quality of the web camera on the Dell Pro 14. All that I would say that Dell's promise of making this a good conferencing laptop is probably pretty accurate. It's, it's good. And then it also has a little privacy shutter at the top too. Features on this thing really are probably close to a five out of five. I mean, there's really nothing more on it that you need or want. And while you may be saying that you wish you had Wi-Fi 7, the fact is, is that most houses and houses and offices don't use, utilize Wi-Fi 7 anyway. So you can option these things with a Wi-Fi 7 card and Dell probably should have just given it to you in the, from the get go. But it's not like Wi-Fi 6E is slow either. And you do have ethernet in it if you gotta ever plug in. So yeah, ultimately feature set is pretty solid. Upgrade and repairability is about a three out of five. The reason why they make it out of these sort of weird plastics instead of aluminum and metal and glass is so you can service it a little bit easier. Bottom pops off, you can put in new storage, you can replace a motherboard. Bezel pops off, you can replace a broken screen. Let me just make sure I didn't screw up the thing when I touched the panel. Um, you know, you can't upgrade the RAM, but that's unfortunately where most manufacturers are going these days. So, you know, it gets about like a three out of five in terms of upgradeability, repairability. Uh, there are far, far worse computers out there, such as a MacBook. Performance is a four out of five. If you use Super Engine on this thing, you will get about a 2416. Uh, price to performance ratio on this thing is, I would go so far as to say, fairly outstanding. It does only have integrated graphics. So, you know, if you are gaming, you're only gonna be able to play things like Minecraft and Roblox and like, you know, some of the higher end games on like low settings. <laughs> Good girl. But with that lower resolution screen, you should be able to eke out a little more game time than you would if it did have a 2K panel because the graphics card is having to drive to less. With that said, if you are using this thing for uh, audio editing, for Photoshop, for any kind of productivity tasks, internet, email, Excel, you get the idea. You will never want for more power. This thing is wickedly, blazingly fast. So while we're on that subject, who is this thing for? Well, I would say that it is for probably like podcasters, um, audio editors, photoshoppers, photographers, despite not having a camera card port. Um, video editing, you could do 4K raw, light, very, very light loads of it, um, but certainly 1080p, no problem. College kids, travelers, business people, this is kind of a, it's a laptop for everybody, so long as you can foot, you know, stomach the thousand dollar price tag. What they've really done is just jammed a lot of power into a small little thing in order to kind of future proof it. And I appreciate that sort of paradigm. 
So overall, what do I think of the Dell, the new Dell Pro 14 series machines? I do think that they feel a little bit cheap. Uh, I do love that they're like a no fluff, no BS computer. They're clean, they're modern, but for $1,200 plus, I would have liked to see a slightly different material, if not also better battery life. And the one thing that I think Dell misstepped on here, and maybe they'll sort of figure this out over the next couple of years, is that in an effort to sort of simplify their lineup, that's why they got rid of Inspiron, Latitude, XPS, etc. They wanted to just try to make things a little bit easier when purchasing. But the fact is, is that if you go to Dell's website and you try to find between the Dell, the Dell Pro, the Dell Pro Plus, the Dell Pro Plus Premium, the Dell Ultimate, whatever, there's now almost like more options. And a lot of them kind of overlap. They almost made the buying process more confusing, which to me made no sense whatsoever. Dell, I, I feel like they can stick with their new naming convention without an issue, but you guys do need to figure out the lineup just a little bit, just kind of clean it up slightly. We have more calls from people trying to figure out what new Dell they should buy now than we did before they changed the names. But overall, do I recommend the new Dell Pro 14? And the answer is absolutely yes. I do think that it is a solid choice. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of better options out there. And while it may be slightly overpriced, you are going to get good warranty, good support, a good computer, and it's gonna be reliable. So, uh, should you buy the Dell Pro 14? Yes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. Please like and subscribe. And we'll be back with another video really soon.